Welcome back. Well, class, what have we learned? What we've learned is that uh, Illinois, Arkansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, Alaska, every state where there was a minimum wage increase on the ballot, it won. Wherever there was pot on the ballot, it won. Wherever there was anti-abortion measures on the ballot, they lost. Wherever there were fracking bans on the ballot, Texas, California, Ohio, they won. Paid sick time won in Massachusetts, California, Connecticut, New Jersey. Uh, reducing felonies run in California, you, gun control run in Washington State, uh, bail reform won in, in New Jersey, uh, getting money out of politics, 80% win in Ripon, Wisconsin, the home of the, the, of, the, of, the, of the Republican Party. Seattle voted to tax themselves to pay for preschool for the poor. California, Berkeley, California, passes a tax on soda. The Democrats who embraced the president or who at least embraced progressive measures like Al Franken and Jeff Berkeley, one walking away, and the Democrats who were the conservatives failed. What does this tell us? Let's ask one of the most astute political observers in our nation, Ralph Nader, a consumer advocate and uh, uh, author of his, new, his most recent book, Unstoppable, the Emerging Left-Right Alliance to Dismantle the Corporate State. His website, Nader.org. Ralph Nader, welcome back, sir. Thank you, Tom. It's always great having you on. I'm curious your dissection of what happened on Tuesday. Well, it's, uh, it's what you actually said. The, the uh, wishy-washy senators like Senator Pryor and Senator Landrew, who's about to lose the runoff, and, and other senators uh, who lost, uh, lost because, number one, they ran away from the Democratic Party and President Obama, and, but they didn't stand for anything. Uh, all they uh, kept saying, in effect, was, here's how we blur the difference between the Democrats and my Republican opponents. And Senator Pryor was a perfect example of that. He got six visits from uh, Bill Clinton, and when Bill Clinton comes in to support uh, someone in Arkansas, he goes to all kinds of towns and cities. He's not just, you know, hotel press conferences. So he went into at least 25 areas, and Pryor lost big. Uh, so the lesson basically is you have to stand for something that relates to the question, whose side are you on, big business or the people? And then you fill in the blanks by responding to what people think are their necessities and their legitimate interests where they work, live, and raise their children. And that means in the future, months now, the big opportunity is to, is to put forward a public works uh, project repairing and remodeling and renovating America's public facilities, the usual public transit, bridges, highways, schools, community health clinics, libraries, sewage, water systems, ports, airports. Uh, most, many of them are crumbling. The American Society of Civil Engineers annual report puts the need of deferred maintenance at about $3 trillion. Now, that's a lot of jobs that cannot be exported to China or elsewhere. And they improve safety, uh, efficiency, and facilities of living in communities all over the country. So if the Democrats go for a left-right alliance on this, because the local chamber of commerce are for it, the local workers and unions are for it, the local small businesses are for repairing their communities, of course. Yeah. So it's a unified issue. The remaining question is, how do they pay for it? One, by getting rid of crony capitalism or corporate welfare subsidies, handouts, giveaways. That's a left-right alliance. Two, by making some of these giant corporations pay their fair share of taxes, like Apple and General Electric are making millions, tens of billions of dollars, and paying very little or no federal income tax. Right. Uh, that's a lot of small business support for that. And then the third is cutting back on empire and the bloated, corrupt military contracting budget, putting this money into repairing, renovating, and creating new public facilities all over the country. That's the way to put Senator McConnell and Speaker Boehner completely on the defensive, where they look back where they came from, and they see this left-right alliance, this union workers uh, chamber of commerce alliance, and, and that is an unstoppable alliance. That's what I take coming out of this miserable election. Yeah, I'm with you. And the, the, and the title of Ralph Nader's new book is Unstoppable. No coincidence there. Uh, and I think you've nailed it. I would add, if I may respectfully, A, 
uh, the old cliche, if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall. F- if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And B, I would add to that infrastructure list, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, Ralph Nader. Uh, I would add to that infrastructure list the, uh, what I think is the most critical infrastructure in the United States that has been completely ignored, which is our intellectual infrastructure. Our young people, our schools are going to hell in a handbasket, all this privatization and all this stuff. We've got $1.3 trillion in student loan debt when you know uh, Germany just banned tuition on the part of colleges, said it's illegal now to charge tuition in Germany. Um, it, it, one of the uh, Financial Times this morning, I was reading the Financial Times, they're saying, hey, you know, now's a good, now that the Republicans are in charge, it's a good time to invest in for-profit colleges because we can exploit the kids even more. Your That's thoughts? Right. You know, I mean, the, the youngsters are profit centers for gouging corporations and Department of Education. Let's not forget that. They're making money off student loans, too. Yep, this is uh, wrong. Not as bad as, uh, you know, the uh, for-profit universities. I proposed a few months ago uh, an equitable uh, exchange here, and that is we should tax Wall Street, Wall Street transaction taxes, raise $300 billion, and start uh, launching a jubilee to erase the student loan. Why do I say this? Because Wall Street's crash in 2008-2009 stripped the young generation of Americans of economic opportunity that is still continuing and metastasizing. The law, inadequate jobs, the student loan uh, albatross, uh, the inability to get income at age 30 or age 35 to buy homes, um, all this comes from this crash uh, of Wall Street. And so the argument should be in Congress, let's make Wall Street redeem itself partially uh, by being taxed on its stock transaction tax, a, a less than one half of one percent will raise three billion, three hundred billion dollars, such as the volume of derivatives, etc., trillions of dollars of derivatives uh, every year, and that goes to erase the student loan to free youngsters uh, from this albatross that sometimes continues into their thirties, forties, fifties. It just rolls over and starts. Uh, accreting in interest, et cetera. And for the youngsters who don't have student loans, you, uh, Wall Street will pay for apprenticeships and technical assistance to get them adequate employment. That's going to be another left-right issue, uh, and Congress would have to at least consider that one. Yeah. Have you had any conversations with anybody in the Democratic Party about changing their messaging and their strategies? Yeah, I talked to Harry Reid about three and a half uh, weeks ago. He was coming out of a dentist office in, in Nevada, and, and I said, you know, the, the minimum wage issue should be nationalized. I know you're talking about it finally. The Democrats took a long time, but it, it, not talking enough about it. And, and he said, yeah, the president could nationalize this in a barnstorm around the country. And he told me he was going to call the president. Well, what happened to the president is he took these unpopularity polls far too seriously. He should have been a give him hell Harry, like Harry Truman, uh, upsetting Dewey in 1948 uh, when he was low in the polls. Uh, Truman, he, he went all over on trains and give him hell Harry, yeah. and he won. I was thinking the same thing. Obama I played a Harry Truman. Cl- he went to these uh, wealthy salons from New York to Los Angeles to raise money uh, from fat cats for the Democratic Party. And then he disappeared. I mean, he spent two weeks doing this. That's a lot of time for a president in the last uh, month or uh, and a half. Instead, he should have been barnstorming with some of those 30 million workers who are making less today than they made, the workers made in 1968 adjusted for inflation. Yeah. He didn't do that, so he contributed to this defeat as well. But we can't forget that the voters, uh, Tom, are not doing their homework. Yeah. They're not doing their homework, and when voters don't do their homework on the record of the candidates, they're very susceptible to propaganda. There you go. Hang on. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Ralph Nader. Nader.org is the website. His newest book, Unstoppable, the Emerging Left-Right Alliance to Dismantle a Corporate State. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Tom. Great talking with you as always.